All right, folks, today we are going to talk about alcohol poisoning, a very important topic for police and security work. This one may very well save you and your job someday, so stick around. Where are you going? Get out of the way! I want to thank my boss for coming up with this topic today. Uh, I brought someone in who was uh, pretty blotto drunk from the hospital the other night, and he said, hey, you should do one of your goofy YouTube videos on alcohol poisoning and why it's important to know the difference between someone who's just drunk and someone who has alcohol poisoning and somebody who's just diabetic. So we're going to take care of just the alcohol poisoning section tonight, although it is also very important to know the difference between somebody who's diabetic and someone who is very drunk, and we're going to work on that in a later video. So alcohol poisoning is what happens when you have way too much to drink, and way too much to drink can different, mean different things for different people. At 190 pounds, the number of drinks that I could have uh, would be entirely different from someone who has, who's say, 100 pounds or somebody who's 300 pounds. And how well you can function and how long it takes before bad things start to happen to you can sometimes depend on what your tolerance is to alcohol. But at a certain point, everybody hits the level where alcohol poisoning or the amount of intoxication that you're suffering from becomes a medical emergency. Now, for police work, it's kind of obvious where alcohol poisoning comes in. We come in contact with a lot of drunk people, and people have asked in the past about doing videos about how to deal with drunk people. And before we can talk about dealing with a person who's a little drunk or pretty drunk, we have to talk about people who are at all the way the far end of the spectrum where they're gonna need medical attention and we need to deal with them completely differently than just get them to go to bed or get them to go off on their own. Because if we get a person with alcohol poisoning to just go to bed, we could actually make this situation a lot worse. So let's talk about alcohol poisoning, the symptoms of alcohol poisoning. When somebody is so intoxicated that they are vomiting, that's the first sign, normally the first sign that people start having of alcohol poisoning. That's your classic sign all of us are pretty familiar with if we went to college or were in the military for any period of time. People get so drunk that they vomit. And vomiting can sometimes be a good thing because that means some of the alcohol that would have been going into their system is coming back out. But it means they're already way past the point that they should be if they're vomiting. So if somebody starts vomiting, the worst thing you can do is start feeding them drinks. It's a little pro tip for your personal life. But in police work, if you have somebody that's so drunk that they're vomiting and all that's coming up is alcohol, especially if all that's coming up is alcohol, we need to start worrying about that person's ability not only to take care of themselves, but also their ability to maintain homeostasis in their body and their ability to remain living, especially if we're going to take them into custody or send them to bed for the night. The same goes if you have a person who's intoxicated, they're having seizures. Seizures should also be treated as a medical emergency, uh, but in case it doesn't go without saying, if someone's having a seizure and they're really drunk, that's a bad sign. Anytime somebody's having a seizure, that means something's going a little off in their head. Slow breathing. This is a little harder to catch with people, but if you have someone who's Let's say they get you get a call to the person and they're saying this person's unconscious on the street and their breathing is less than eight breaths a minute. That's a bad sign. That's pretty obvious less than eight breaths a minute. If you try to take eight breaths a minute, you realize how infrequent that is and how big of a problem that could be. It's not always completely evident when you first look at the person, but when you're assessing how drunk someone is, or how bad off they are, whether or not you're gonna call an ambulance for them or just give them a ride home, that's something to take into account. Irregular breathing, so more than 10 second intervals between taking breaths and uh, blue or pale skin. Now pale would depend on if you know this person um, from daily activities. So if it's your regular drunk and you know the regular drunk isn't normally really pale, that could be an issue. If it's a regular drunk and they're normally my skin tone and they look like my skin tone, then you're probably fine. But Pale could be an issue of having to know the person prior to them being intoxicated and then seeing them now to know if their skin is more pale than normal. But if you got somebody and they're bleach white and it doesn't look like the normal skin tone, that's probably a bad sign. Or if their skin starts turning blue. Listen, anytime somebody's skin starts turning blue, that's a problem. You should probably get them an ambulance. Hypothermia, so if they're, if they're cold to the touch, especially if it's warm out, or if their body temperature has dropped to a point that's not normal for someone to be living, you know, somebody's below 98 degrees, that's probably an issue, and you can't wake them up. Now, this is a classic sign that we have with people with parties. This is where you get issues if you're in a security industry, you do security work, and you're working at a bar, and someone is sitting in the back of the room, and they're drinking so much, and, you know, sometimes the bartenders don't catch it all. 
somebody says, oh, this person's really drunk, you can't wake them up, that's a situation that you should be calling 911 for. If you're a police officer, you go to a house or a party or whatever, and you find someone laying on the street and you can't wake them up, that's always a situation you should be calling 911 for. Either they're so intoxicated, if it appears that they're intoxicated, or you're smelling alcohol on them, you think that they're drunk, that they can't wake up, that's a problem with their brain. People, you should be able to wake anyone up, regardless of how deep in sleep they are, or they've been drugged, in which case we should be getting to the hospital anyway because we don't know what's in the stuff that they took. If we start seeing these signs in people that we're dealing with, we need to call them an ambulance, uh, regardless if we're a police officer or a security guard, or if we're in EMS, these are signs that we can't let someone refuse. This person has acute alcohol poisoning. Now next we're gonna look into things and we're gonna talk about things that are the risk factors of alcohol poisoning, how this can go badly for us. It's easy to say, call an ambulance if these things occur, but I think it's important that everybody know exactly how serious the issues are that we're dealing with. So here are some of the repercussions of someone not just being really drunk, but having alcohol poisoning that is unchecked and that hasn't been taken care of properly, that you haven't taken them in out of the weather and you haven't gotten them uh, to proper EMS services or to a hospital. All right, so how serious is alcohol poisoning really? Well, obviously, if they're calling it poisoning, there are some physiological problems that are gonna go on with having too much alcohol in your system, damage to your brain, stuff like that, things that are directly alcohol related. I'm not a doctor, I don't know all about that. Feel free to put them in the comment section if you know more. But I know if they call it poisoning and the doctor says it's no good and they say it can screw up your brain, something's going on there. Uh, the other one is exposure. This is one we run into with bums a lot is that a uh, bum will get drunk. I actually just talked to somebody because I was streaming this on Instagram Live and they were talking about um, a person that they knew that was drinking hand sanitizer. I can only assume that that was a bum. And uh, they will get drunk and in the uh, summertime, they'll get overcome by heat. They'll lay out in the sun. They'll be so drunk they won't think to lay in the shade. They'll lay in the sun. They'll get heat stroke, dehydration, things like that. Uh, your body needs a certain amount of water in order for you to live, and if it all comes starts coming out of your pores, dehydration is going to set in very fast. It's also a problem with vomiting. You get dehydrated even faster. Also, the opposite is true. Uh, something that's uh, pretty common on college campuses is uh, people getting drunk and falling down in the cold. We also have a problem with people getting drunk and walking home. They'll walk home down the side of the highway or down the side of a busy road, and they will fall into a snow embankment drunk, and they will die of hypothermia. They'll die of exposure from the cold. Uh, another one is choking on your own vomit. You have to remember what I said about that first slide was that people that have acute alcohol intoxication or alcohol poisoning, uh, they'll be so drunk where they won't wake up when the normal cues to your body would be to wake up. And one of the issues with that is, and it's also vomiting, and the issue with that is that if you're drunk and you vomit, or if the person's drunk and they vomit, and they're laying on their back, they could choke on their own vomit because their normal bodily reaction to become conscious again to save their life is gonna be um, cut off by all the alcohol that's uh, swimming in their brain. And then finally, sexual assault. If somebody's so drunk that they're not gonna wake up, and that people are thinking that they're not going to um, be able to protect themselves, they're much more susceptible to a sexual assault and sometimes we can see this in a bar environment or in a club environment or a party environment where someone has been uh, drugged with something in their drink but also there's I mean before there was uh, roofies there was just getting somebody really 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 drunk so that's one of the possible repercussions of alcohol poisoning and one of the reasons why it's important that if you find someone who's displaying those symptoms of alcohol poisoning you get them professional attention. You make sure they're not left alone until you know that they're all right. And if they're showing signs of alcohol poisoning, you should probably take them to a hospital where you know they're gonna be safe, not only from the effects of the alcohol and exposure and from choking on their own vomit, but also from other people who might wanna victimize them. Those are some of the things that we have to take into account and some of the side effects from them if we don't take them into account doing police and security work or anytime we're hanging around drunk people are trying to deal with drunk people. In the future, we're gonna do videos on dealing with drunk people who are only slightly intoxicated and some of the results of that, and maybe do some DUI stuff in the future, talking about horizontal gaze and stagmus, how that works, and the difference between people who are intoxicated, people who are having diabetic issues, and how to tell the difference between them. But this is our hard line stuff, the stuff where being drunk becomes a medical emergency that we need to have taken care of right away. 
you guys have anything you would like to add to this? I am obviously not a medical professional. I am not an expert by any means in how people get intoxicated or the results of it. So if you have stuff to add, please put it down in the comments below. We love hearing from everybody. Until next week, you guys be safe and take care of each other. I'd like to thank all the Patreon supporters and especially the shift supervisor level Patreon supporters that we have listed here. Your contributions are what allows free field training to continue on and become better. Thank you.